We're going to read one story today, just one, and it's written by a first grade boy named Nate. And we're going to try to figure out, we're going to try to figure out why this story is a good story. And I'm going to tell you right now, I think it's a good story. I really enjoy it. Today we were working with third graders around the quality elements of a fantasy story, using critique as a lesson. Once upon a time, there was a dancing ballerina prince who was named Ernie. Prince Ernie was in love with beautiful prin Princess Max. Just giving kids descriptors of what we hope they will do, whether those descriptors are through learning targets or whether they're through a rubric, it can often feel to kids like it's just words. I like this girl, and I don't know if she like. do you know what I mean? Much more powerful is to bring in a model of great work, and then have the kids themselves be detectives, to have the excitement of discovering quality themselves, and then naming that quality in their own words. The battle was tough, but he was tough. I think it's particularly important that we're using the work of real students. Hit them and smack them right in the bumper. Bumping butt. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of a nice way of saying butt. They're amused by it, they see problems with it, it's not perfect, and yet it has qualities that make it sparkle and shine, and it's available and accessible. They know another kid did it. And they lived happily ever after. Can you all give Rosa some applause here? So your job now is to be detectives at your table and think, hmm, what did Nate do that makes this story interesting? I think he used a little bit of imagination in his um, story. Imagination. And he made up like characters. He made up Prince Ernie. Ernie. Prince Ernie. He probably used other stories to get the idea of that the story. And he decided to copy a princess book, but not like copy it, but like not think of princess stuff in that. And he add more details. Okay, time's up. Papers down. Who can name something for me that makes the story work? And Jamal, I'm going to start with you because you immediately said, I like this part of the story. Um, bumper. So two things I'm hearing there. One thing is you like it because it's funny. I am in a positive way manipulative in these settings by when I hear a kid have the kernel of a great idea that I see. Anybody's story can be helped by some humor, but I also hear you saying, Jamal, that his word choice was good. Something that's a kernel of an important convention in a discipline. I will rephrase it for them and then try to put it in language that, that makes it barely available for all kids. Great. What else? He added more details. Can you give me an example there? I think that's right. Page seven. Good. Read aloud. Right. The part that you thought had some good details. Was not over the key. And when there's important features in the work that kids have not yet come out with, I might pose it as a question. Now, did, did you spell everything right? Um, no. And then they sort of discover it on their own, but in truth, I've planted that for them. If you have a great word and you're not sure on how to spell it, was he brave enough to use it? Yes. Yes. So he was brave enough, be brave, to try hard words. One of the things I really loved in today's critique session was their explication of his character as having tension between being brave and fighting battles, but also being scared. I was afraid you wouldn't like me. Me too, she said. That's what I would. And why did it surprise you? He was afraid. Good. Oh, Hayden, this is so great. Because do you think that this guy's a pretty brave guy? Yes. 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 Me too. Like, he, what did he stand up to? What are the obstacles he stood up to? He the was villain, the trolls. And the witch. The witch. I always come into a critique with a strong piece of work, and I know the qualities of that work that I hope kids really? and then will did find. He get scared? When he was trying to talk to her, exactly. he was shy. Exactly right. I love that, Tatum. What else, Maureen? What do you see? Um, he had imagination. Good. Princesses. So the critique is really doing two things at once. It's teaching them the attributes of a high-quality piece of work in that genre. Trolls and stuff, uh, imagination. But at the same time, it's teaching them the critical analysis of how to critique work, which they then use for their own self-analysis. It, it, it makes them better self-assessors, and it makes them better peer assessors. Great. Having something a little scary is OK to have in your story. 
There's not one right time to use a critique. It, it's hitting the moment when kids need that information, when everybody could be lifted. You know what? I'd like to make a longer story. I'd like to use some more imagination. I'd like to put some more obstacles in it. And it's, like it's using a, a tangible, concrete piece of work to do it, not just language to do it. It gives them a vision. familiar with. I can't spell them perfectly, but I'm going to try them. I'm going to try to have some surprises in my story.